face to face and today we uh, we're going to speak about uh, a difficult issue with uh, uh, nuclear weapons and uh, uh, we're going to talk about iran we're going to talk about uh, korea we're going to of course i will talk about the us and and russia but before uh, we take the conversation with uh, anthony with uh, we did this documentary on uh, on nuclear weapons um, I want to make something very clear then the issue of the nuclear weapon in the world for the last uh, 50 60 years it's mainly in the hand of Russia and the US who control 90 percent of the nuclear head so um, um, that need to be very clear for any uh, anyone who's watching the show then the rest of the world when we talk about nuclear weapon we talk about the 10 percent the, the 90 percent of the nuclear weapons head are in control of russia and the us anthony welcome to face to face uh, we're going to talk about a very complicated situation but the news every day now uh, give us news on iran on Co north korea and and uh, so you have the microphone. Okay, David, <laughs> thank you so much. And, and thank you for covering this subject. Uh, you're absolutely right about Russia and the United States. There's, there's no doubt about it. We're the two that are running this race, and we are, the two of us are responsible, especially the United States, uh, are totally responsible for the tremendous horror that can be before us at any moment. We have, all of us have uh, these horrible devices. Uh, on hair trigger alert that mm -hmm. are beyond anyone's imagination. We can't believe how horrible. Hiroshima was a tiny firecracker compared to the weapons Which we have. Which is possible now. So I, I want to thank you. I want to thank Presenza for uh, coming out, because there's also been a media blackout, especially in the United States, yeah. about our nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. We love talking about other people's nuclear weapons. We love talking about... Um, Nuclear the risk of non Iran and the risk of North Korea sure. and the risk of Palestine and the yeah. risk of, but we never talk about our. You're right. You're right. And when I lobby on on behalf of uh, raising the consciousness of about our nuclear weapon system, it's often, especially from our representatives, that's what I get first. What about Iran? Mm -hmm. What about North Korea? And I'm like, what about them? Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to thank Presenza, and I, I want to throw out a pitch. I went on the website, and the first thing I saw on the website is a conference in Madrid, which David told me he's going to, <laughs> which is going to be around. ICON's going to be there, yeah. um, the International Campaign Against Nuclear Weapons. I'm really sure to say so that. Mm -hmm. thank you, uh, Presenza, for we're really on a roll. There's actually a tremendous amount of good news for us all, despite our blackout here, despite what it seems, there's a lot of positive things happening. We're, we're putting chinks in the armor. Uh, things are getting clearer and clearer, because this has been, this is a secret world. It's an extremely dangerous world. It's got nothing to do with democracy. This world is kept out of the dem democratic the process. process. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do with democracy mm -hmm. when uh, this was something stolen. Uh, uh, from scientists who were very upset that the military really just was taking this technology and weaponizing it, yeah. uh, and and then lying to us on and on and on. But we can get into some of those. Uh, I don't know exactly where you want to take it. Just thank you, Presenza, and thank you, David, for this moment mm -hmm. together. I, I, because I don't want to forget it, I want to talk about some colleagues of mine, and you were recently in the Mary House, which is the Catholic worker, it's where Dorothy Day, if people don't know who Dorothy Day is, she's really worth looking up, one of our, our great women patriots in this country, who started the Catholic worker with Peter Morn in 1931. And from the first explosion in Hiroshima, she, her, she came out with the first, uh, you know, everyone was cheering that we uh, won this war in Japan, and we thought it had to do with the nuclear weapon. And uh, Dorothy was well, like, okay, but you know, we just vaporized many, many thousands of human of life, beings. Yeah. You know? yeah, and she really was one of the first just to speak up about it, and uh, she never stopped talking about it, mm -hmm. never stopped demonstrating, went to jail many times. Mm -hmm. So uh, great, great woman. So a number of our colleagues, uh, 
from the Catholic worker, uh, were recently in prison on April 4th. Uh, there was in Georgia uh, the plowshares, they call themselves the Kings Bay plowshares. Uh, there's seven of them. Uh, the plowshares movement started with uh, Dan and Phil Berrigan, who a lot of us know from uh, their protests against the Vietnam War, yeah. but uh, also long, long advocates of nuclear abolition. Mm -hmm. So the plowshares started with them in 1980, for those who don't know, and forgive me those who know everything about the Berrigans. Um, and thank you for taking this time to get informed. But uh, after a, well over a year of planning and discernment, these se and in secrecy, because the government surveils all of us and they know uh, what we're writing and, and hearing, so they had to do this in secrecy. So a lot of us didn't even know that our colleagues were going to do this action. And they got onto this nuclear submarine base down in, in Georgia and were arrested. They went in at night and they had some clippers, they got through the fences, they risked their lives. Any of them could have been shot at any time. And they knew they were going in facing possibly 10, 20 years of prison. We don't know. Um, and they're in jail right now and they, they're tomorrow, uh, May 10th, they're going to be uh, to court and they'll have a, uh, their a hearing their initial hearing is mm -hmm. tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, and these people are very experienced and know everything about nuclear weapons. Martha Hennessy is Dorothy Day's granddaughter mm -hmm. and a, a dear friend. And she went out uh, last summer and she went to Dorothy's grave and she kept it to herself. I didn't know exactly what she was thinking, but I knew she had something deep in her mind that she was praying on. And this is it. They really want to try to help this world uh, understand the gravity of these of, of these nuclear. They, it really is a grave situation we're in, and they really think it's worth them risking their lives. Mm -hmm. And their grandmothers and mothers, they love their families, and they they love life, and they love life so much they're willing to uh, risk their lives and offer their lives, and and in prayer. They go with no malice. They go loving the people that work at Kings Bay. They go loving the soldiers who man our submarines. Uh, but it is, it is a, a runaway industry. Mm -hmm. It's all about really profiteering. Yeah. Our nuclear weapons put all of us in great danger every day. And uh, so I, I want to thank them publicly. If you want to follow what's happening there, Facebook page is Kings Bay plowshares, Kings Bay plowshares. And uh, please support them in any way. Write them letter postcards. Uh -huh. They can't take letters. And uh, follow the trial. It's, uh, they, they, there's been no press, as, know. as you know. That's it, why it I really— It an issue with nuclear. It's, it's, yeah. it's a coverage. It's very— uh, 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 even, even with Aaron and, and Korea, I mean, we, we, don't, we know very little about— We know very little about the nuclear issue and, yeah. and the situation. Yeah. I mean, North Korea, I've, I've been writing, and, and during uh -huh. the treaty, we, we can get into the treaty for mm -hmm. the uh, prohibition of nuclear weapons, mm -hmm. which is a treaty. Yeah. I don't know if you've covered that. Did, no, have you covered that? not yet. Wow. I well, to, I want this, to defend the, the guest we see here today. Oh, <laughs> well, we have a lot of exciting <laughs> things to talk about. But just, we'll, we'll talk about Korea and, and uh, North Korea and uh, Korea's uh, maybe a little bit more later, and Iran a little bit We'll, we'll get back to that, but it's really exciting that the Koreas are talking, and uh, it, it's, it's a great move, and I thank both of them, because our military complex is thrown off like, you know, they, they depend on them being divided, and, and they depend on people hating and fearing no, and one I, another. I heard it's even more interesting, because they do it— the, the ideas, I mean, the, the, what, what came out of that discussion was then Korea realized that they cannot in some way trust too much China and they cannot trust too much the U.S. So it's in some ways their unification the, is going is, is gonna to push yeah. the two other guys out. So yeah, I, I, I thought it was very interesting yeah. uh, um, allegorical figure of, of that moment because it's... Uh, uh, sorry. No, no, it's, you're right on, and I'm hoping that's what we get out of this. And I, I've been writing North Korea even long before they actually had a date, and, but when they just mentioned it, just supporting it, and that's my hope too, David, is that um, 
The problem isn't North Korea's 10 nuclear weapons mm -hmm. or the nuclear pro I mean, look, all, every nuclear weapon is a huge affront to humanity, each and every one. But we're the ones who created this. And uh, the really, North Korea is taking a page out of our own playbook. Every, every bit of their propaganda is the same as our propaganda in the 50s and the 60s. They use the same words we do. It's for our safety. It's for our security. It's for balance in the region, you know. For, so uh, they want to protect themselves, right? That's why we built our nuclear weapons, to protect themselves. No, no, but you go beyond that, because the people who didn't do it, yeah. they, are, they disappeared. Yeah. I mean, Iraq, uh, Gaddafi, all of these people, they went. They, that's true too. It, 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 that's the yeah. problem of, of that yeah. discussion. It's yeah. it, the people who didn't take the the, the, the road of saying we're going to we're going to do nuclear weapons to protect ourselves. Uh, they were not taking seriously. I mean, they were and yeah. they were taking advantage of and and. I mean, you go against the uh, NPT conference, the U.S. did never respect the that's NPT right, that's conference, right. no, the that's Russian the key. never. So it, it's really— That's uh, the key. Yeah. And that's—we'll uh, get into the—but um, but I just try to finish up on North yeah. Korea. Uh, I'm, I'm just really happy I'm very I'm supporting them mm -hmm. and I'm hoping they turn around saying sure we'll we'll let you inspect and yeah we'll we'll try to get we'll get rid of our nuclear weapons okay but can you do us one favor the United States can you start looking at your program yeah, at all exactly and uh, you know you're building new ones you're you've got more than anybody so um, you're in the right. US, in right. the US has a base in in, in South Korea absolutely with a very uh, it's building, a strong yeah. Hole there. Building right now, we sell our equipment right now. We're building a huge missile defense. Mm -hmm. We just sold another huge missile defense systems to South Korea. Mm -hmm. Huge money. And that's what this is all about. Keep mm -hmm. the fear up and keep the money mm -hmm. and uh, keep your enemies, you know, our enemies. So mm -hmm. thank you, Koreas, for getting. And I'm not saying any people are pro. I'm not saying Kim isn't, you know, hasn't killed and slaughtered people in the starvation. And, but, you know, I know what our country has been involved with mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So just let's stay positive here. Let's keep, hopefully this will create some discussion about our own nuclear weapon program, which we don't have here in this. Our media doesn't have discussion about our nuclear weapon program. And the millions, millions of Americans who have voted with their feet, feet in the 80s. The, the hundreds of cities and towns that passed resolutions and proclamations in the 80s that they want to be nuclear free zones and we want to get rid of, we almost did. You know, Gorbachev uh, got our president who was a hawk, you know, President Reagan was a true hawk and, and reinvigorated our nuclear weapon program after Carter. And uh, Gorbachev really listened to the thousands and the millions of people that took the streets around the world protesting nuclear weapons and saying, look, this will blow up our planet. We don't want to do that. We don't hate each other. We, we believe humanity can have the courage, have the wisdom, and have the strength to face our challenges together. And really, that's the problem. To me, we have these out of great weakness, uh, at, you know, based on lies, and, and um, it's profiteering that you know, what was the uh, senator who, who turned to McCarthy in the 50s and said, have you no decency? And that's what I need to say <laughs> again to all of our representatives. Uh -huh. Have you no decency? Have you no courage? So I can. Yeah. Go. Yeah. You have, to, you have to tell the story. Well, um, I, I can't. Th thank you. The, the I can start with the uh, physicians. Uh, inter uh, phys in International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War exactly. several years ago. Mm -hmm. They started this uh, organization. A lot of youth uh, got involved with ICON, and it's they really helped mobilize and support and encourage this treaty. Without them, we may probably wouldn't have this treaty, but my hat is off to the 122 nations who worked really, really hard, and it's a beautiful document 
don't take my word, please, it's online. Uh, go find it, read it. It's nine pages. It is a beautifully written document. People worked extremely hard for it from all over the world, lawyers, but oh, great minds. And this was preceded by 155 nations who, for years before this treaty uh, was called for, uh, got together and talked about the uh, humanitarian impact nu any nuclear yeah. weapon will have. Mm -hmm. And the devastation to our planet, mm -hmm. to civilization, that any exchange, a small exchange, would have on mm -hmm. our planet. Mm -hmm. So this is what this is what started this move towards a treaty. It was going to be a conference to talk about a treaty, and it really, it was really historic. And what happened there over that month and a half, two months in the UN last summer was magic. It was people working through the night. And, of course, it was Russia and the United States uh, dismissed this immediately. It's a bunch of idealistic people. Well, they weren't in the room. There's not one of us in that room that so the is five, so the idealistic. The five members of the Security Council of the UN yeah. are not supporting this treaty. No, they were not involved, and they, they had were. their allies not come, too. They exactly. pressured their allies yeah. not to join. And so the treaty is to ban New, to the, the selling, the production, selling, the production, the research, the uh, tr the, the transport. It, it's uh, yeah, and weapons. making, and never mind threatening, and the threat of use, just mm -hmm. the threat of use. You know, these things are right now on hair trigger alert. They really need to be gotten rid of. Uh, but um, anyway, so there's that was a, a, a tremendous moment in all our lives and uh, when that was adopted by these 122 nations then it was brought to the UN for ratification well over well over 50 countries have ratified it and we're working that's what's before us please out there work on your representatives whatever country you're from to to please ratify and look at this treaty uh, there are so many great organizations that can explain it to you, can go over the details, but it, it makes sense. It's common sense. Yeah. Anyone who reads this treaty mm -hmm. will understand why we're doing it. Uh, and, so, and so I can got a Nobel Peace Prize for that campaign. Yeah, I wanted to. There's so many great things happening, and that. That's icon. Now, Nobel Peace Prize has been getting a lot of hits. <laughs> hits. They're making it look bad. For good reasons sometimes. But, but, but this is a great, yeah. great, yeah. great reason. Yeah. And I urge everyone also to go on the Nobel Peace Prize website or ICON's website and listen to not only ICON's beautiful speeches in accepting this, mm -hmm. but please listen to the Nobel Peace Prize, why they gave it. Her speech uh, about why they gave it to ICON is is key, and the re reality is the nuclear weapon states have been avoiding our obligations since 1968 mm -hmm. in that treaty, which we're signature of. So we've been breaking international law, and and we've been fooling the people through this negotiation process since the 60s. And we've been dragging things on. And these negotiations, one of my great mentors has been Ambassador Zenon Rosides of Cyprus, the late ambassador. He was a, such a great man. And from 1960 till his death in the 90s, he was trying to tell us all that these negotiations, they're set up by the nuclear weapon states. They, they tell everyone that they really want to get rid of these weapons, but they really, what they do is they keep building them, yeah. and they set up excuse after mm -hmm. excuse. Mm -hmm. So what Ambassador Rosides was saying on the UN floor for decades is that the, these, are, these negotiations often have been a pretense to fool the people that something is being done. Those are his words. Yeah. And he repeated them again and again. And in reality, what we're doing is building and threatening this planet and threatening so, the people. Just to explain, then the, the treaty was to ask the country who didn't have to nuclear weapon to not develop nuclear weapons. And and the and, NPT and, and treaty. And, That's and, and, the, and the commitment was then the US and China and, and Russia and all of that will reduce to eliminate nuclear weapons. Very, and none yeah. of this happened. In That's the last right. 50 years, none of that happened. You know your stuff. 
So that's it, right. it, it, it's, it's, I the, think we need to make the responsibility where, where the responsibility that's right. is. And they just had a pre-conference, and they, uh, they just came out of a pre-conference in Geneva mm, two weeks ago, a pre-conference to the next NPT yeah. conference, mm -hmm. which is in 2020. The nuclear weapon states, uh, they have all the time in the world, so the next NPT conference won't be to 2020. Well, some of us are not wanting to wait. Mm -hmm. Every day mm -hmm. we're risking our lives. Yeah. Every day we're stealing trillions of dollars for money that we really need to save this planet to, to do the great things no, no, that we know how to Obama, do. Obama did, did uh, before he left, he made a commitment to a 10 years plan with yes. billions of dollars investment well, in new technology. I mean, it, it... Yeah, this is why I did my documentary. Yeah. And, and, uh, okay. and uh, but I'll just finish with the yeah. NPT because you're absolutely correct, just so it's clear uh, for your audience that in this NPT treaty, which was put up in 1968, actually President Johnson presented and signed it for us in 1968, um, it's made very clear that, look, everyone around the world, if you do not develop nuclear weapons, us nuclear weapon countries will promise to get together as soon as possible and start the talks on disarmament of our nuclear weapons. That was the promise made. Mm -hmm. It's in Article 6. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. We have not lived up to that promise. Exactly. We, we came close as we'll ever come when this wonderful being who's still alive, still with us, Gorbachev, uh, many Russians don't consider him wonderful, but Gorbachev had his eye and listened to those protesting and, and heard the call that of madness, of, of us destroying the planet and ourselves. There is no national security with these things. Uh, well, we can get into that. It really, you're destroying yourself when, yeah. you, mm -hmm. when you go to destroy the other. Mm -hmm. So Gorbachev and Reagan, he turned that hawk. They really had a chemistry. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hoping, a little chemistry with Reagan—sorry, uh, with Reagan, with uh, President Trump and Kim. They may have some great chemistry. But, you know, Trump knows almost—I could, you know, he knows nothing about nuclear weapons. And he's, he's finding out he's flying by the seat of his pants, but uh, most of us don't know anything about nuclear weapons, so we have some great resources which I'll get into, but I'm sorry if I'm talking quickly or too much, there's a lot to cover, but the reason I did this documentary are st uh, in 2012 when I found out that our President Obama, who I loved and respected in many ways, but uh, on this issue, really, really was disappointing. I mean, he, we know he got the Nobel Peace Prize for just saying that he was against— the, you want to see a nuclear-free world someday. What people didn't hear was him saying, well, it might not happen in my lifetime. That perked me up a little bit. I'm like, no, we can, we can do this in our lifetime. And I want someone who pushes for that. It should be in the lifetime of those who went through Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And those who have been suffering greatly from all the atomic bombing tests that we've done around the world. Us, and, and you cannot make a commitment who is not in your lifetime. You, it, it, it's it's yeah. absolutely, yeah. I mean, who are you to? <laughs> yeah. We, we, you know, this is our children. I don't want to leave this responsibility for our children and our grandchildren. It's irresponsible. It, it's it's well, really the bank system that, that make loans to three generations, but but <laughs> yeah, no, we, we we have a responsibility to take care of this right now. Mm -hmm. They're they're obsolete. They're extremely dangerous. They're costing us everything, and uh, we're being lied to right and left. And a lot of truth is coming out today. Um, so, wh where so was the it? documentary? The doc. Why yeah. I started the documentary. Yeah. So when I got wind through knowing someone in, in the military. I got wind that we just went ahead and signed all the directives. I got wind in 2012 that we went ahead to sign all the directives for new nuclear weapons and uh, new facilities. And there was another plowshares movement back then, Sister Megan and, and two colleagues broke through our, our uh, Oak Ridge Y-12 plant, which holds is the largest repository of our, you know, uranium. They call it the Fort Knox. It's the most heavily guarded uh, place on the planet, probably. And we have an 82-year-old nun back then who went through several layers of fencing, oh, risked wow. her life 
Uh, there's a wonderful book, I don't have it here, mm -hmm. uh, by Dan Zack called mm -hmm. Almighty, about her life and about this mission, mm -hmm. Almighty. So she, she also felt that, uh, I asked her, said, you know, you could have been killed doing this. And she goes, well, all of us fight, we fighting, doing this. standing up for this. And, and yeah. I thank you, David, because you, you know this well. So I, I thank her. And that's when I, I said uh, I needed, we, the, it was not in the press. Mm -hmm. No one talked about it. Mm -hmm. So, and I have thought about doing a documentary. I can't stand doing documentaries. Um, I don't consider myself a documentarian. I, I uh, have done several. Every time I do one on terrorism, et cetera. But every time I do one, I say that's the last one I'm doing. <laughs> this one took me four and a half years. I know it's a three hours. It's unbelievable. Well, I mean, it's mm, mm, thousands of people interviews. It's well, a, a lot of people. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's really a, a fantastic job. It should have been a ten-part series. Yeah. Everyone's, uh, you know. I would have loved for it to be on PBS or the 10 part yeah, series, yeah. but the PBS would never show it because yeah. I want to do some truth telling yeah. in the process. Yeah. So when I realized I couldn't do this 10 part series, I crunched it together and believe it or not, it could have been a seven hour documentary, but I, I wanted to get a lot of different takes that you don't hear. And yeah. listen, I, I, I called the Pentagon, faxed them tried to get in there for interviews. Oh, Lockheed Martin, all our, our industrialists, yeah. our, tried to get our, uh, our senators in there. Everyone refused to talk about it. So I, I turned to my mother and to my, uh, at that time, my 13-year-old niece, and I started there. And uh, from there, we went on to okay. great things. You brought book. We have two minutes left. How many? Two minutes. Really? Yes. Whoa. So, so we need to... Um, well, um, so yeah, well, forget the books. You can. Um, there are some great books if you have to read one. The Doomsday Machine by Daniel Ellsberg. I mean, it's it. Wow, two minutes went fast. Yeah. Um, I thank you uh, very much. That Did book. You, want to um, you know, there's many great books. The Nuclear Heartland, great work by John LaForge, done in the '80s. He revised it recently. Shows you where all our silos are. Um, this is a book by. Tim and Wallace, The Truth About Trident, which is the UK nuclear weapons, which we helped them build. Um, but there, there's lots of resources uh, to go. And ICON's website, um, uh, nuclearbanus.org, Abolition 200, Reaching Critical Will. Reaching Critical Will is part of Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. Their last report, which came out last month, is called Assuring Destruction Forever. It is a great report on the nuclear weapon states and all their, um, all their, nu their nuclear weapons projects. So don't bank on the bomb, divestment. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was Face to Face. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, please keep watching your news on Presenza.com. And uh, hope to see you very soon.